today we're going to make a quick video about solar charge controllers because in my previous test videos I think some of the results might mislead some of the beginners watching my videos. And so this video is going to cover when it's most appropriate to use a PWM versus an MPPT because a lot of the results that I posted make it seem like a PWM would be great for all scenarios but it's not true and I still recommend a lot of people buying an MPPT in that it's worth the added cost. But we're going to talk about that threshold of when it's most advantageous to buy an MPPT and where you need to live, your solar array sizing constraints, what kind of wire you're using, and so much more. So bear with me, let's get started. So the first factor is the budget that you have available or how much money you have. And if you are in dire circumstances and you need to build a system for extremely cheap, a PWM does offer the benefit that it's cheaper. And overall, an MPPT might produce more power but you could always add an extra panel and solar panels are really cheap to offset the cost of the MPPT. And so there's a lot of opinions floating around online and it's very difficult to say what the threshold is. And so it's very hard to actually size a system based off of budget because it's very relative and there's something that a lot of people do not consider and that's the safety. And if you think about a pulse width modulation controller, we need to connect all of the solar panels connecting to it in parallel and so that means we have a lot of current going through those wires and if you notice a lot of the PWMs available on the market are around 30 amps you can buy it larger but you need to understand that the solar panels are using MC4 adapters and if you're using MC4 you're gonna have to use branch adapters to parallel connect and those have a limit of like 30 to 35 amps and if you're using the most common size that's 30 amps I would say logically that the largest size with a PWM you should use is 400 watts. And if you look at max PV input power, it's 400 watts. So no matter what the cost is and no matter what your budget is, I would say that the limit is 400 watts. Anything over 400 watts and you need to use an MPPT, but that's just from a safety standpoint. Now the next factor is solar array sizing constraints. So if you're building a system on the roof of an RV or a van or even a cabin and you're limited on space for your solar panels, you should go with an MPPT because you'll be able to milk more power out of every square inch. And when you have a roof like that that's limited in size, you want to use it to the best of your ability. You want to milk as much power out of it as you can. Now the next factor is where you live in the weather conditions. If it's very cloudy and you live in London or you're far away from the equator, an MPPT over the span of a day will produce a lot more power, sometimes upwards of 25 to 30% more power. If you're using PWM, it's not going to convert nearly as much power. So for everybody that doesn't live in the truck, tropics or anybody that lives in cloudy weather like Oregon or London or something, use an MPPT. Now the next factor to consider is the voltage of your battery bank for your solar power system. And this will determine the cost of your solar charge controller substantially. If you are using a 12 volt battery with a 20 amp solar charge controller, you can see that you can only attach 260 watts to it. If you are using the same solar charge controller with a 24 volt battery, you can use 520 watts of solar power. So if you're using a higher voltage battery, you don't need to spend as much money on MPPT. And this will reduce the cost of an MPPT substantially, literally cutting it in half sometimes. So this is very important. The next factor to consider is how far your solar array is from your solar charge controller. Recently, I did a 400 watt solar array in my backyard and it's 100 and like 20 feet away from the solar charge controller in my battery bank. And I had to use 10 gauge copper wire and it cost around $100. If I was using a PWM controller, instead of spending $100 on wire, I would have to use like $300 to $400 of wire. So that one added expense alone makes using an MPPT a lot cheaper. But if you have a small system and your solar panel array is really close to your charge controller, this will not matter to you at all. And another thing I should 
mention is a lot of PWM controllers do not have temperature sensors. This one does, but this one doesn't. If you have like sealed or flooded lead acid and you don't have temperature sensor for coefficient compensation, which changes the output depending on the temperature of the battery, you can hurt your batteries and they will die a lot sooner. So if you do go with a PWM, it needs to have a temperature sensor. Almost every MPPT I've ever seen on the market has that. So you don't really have to worry about that, but you do need to buy it separately if it doesn't come with it. Like if you buy these without the kit, you need to buy it separately and that's an added cost. So these PWMs are pretty cool on paper, but in the real world conditions, almost everyone should be using an MPPT unless you're on an extreme budget. These are worth their weight in gold. They last a long time. And I mean, they rock. You should always buy one. They are amazing. Oh, and another thing is that a lot of these Chinese ones that work really well are way cheaper than the competition a few years back. So if you bought this size controller as an MPPT through Morningstar or through Blue Sky, it would cost way more money. And these work cheap just as well, if not better in some instances. So yeah, you don't have to spend all that money to get the more expensive ones. These ones work great. And so I hope this helps you guys. I hope it made sense. I didn't want to talk about the charge circuitry and how these converters actually work because there is so much I could talk about and I don't want to bore you guys to death. So I hope this helps you guys. Please let me know in the comment section if you like it and please check out my website. Lots of good information for beginners and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.